Hey there once again YouTube. Now if this video is too long for you, please use the parts section in the description box below. However, I highly suggest to watch through the whole thing. We're going to take a dive into two earthquakes today, a magnitude 4.2 in Hawaii, which struck on the south flank of the Moi Seamount volcano, and the magnitude 5.0 at 2.4 kilometers in depth underneath the Coso Volcanic Field in California. Let's start with the California event first. Now, zooming in, remember the Ridgecrest area saw 6.7.1 and numerous magnitude 4s, magnitude 3s, magnitude 2s, just a, a completely intense seismic activity. In starting in, what was it, July 4th, I believe, is when the 6.4 happened, and then two days later, the 7.1 occurred along this area right here. And a big fracture did open up, it did rupture towards the surface, and we're going to dive into something that happened in this location today, a 5.0, and many, many, many aftershocks related to this 5.0 right on the edge of the Ridgecrest uh, Ridge sequence, excuse me. And this area is the China Lake area, which is also the coastal volcanic field. Now here's the coastal volcanic field area. As you can see, we're at volcanoes.usgs.gov at coastal volcanic, excuse me, volcanic field, which is in this location right here. Notice how here's the Ridgecrest sequence right here. It's my computer's very slow because there are very, very many earthquakes Notice Ridgecrest is right down in this location right here. Excuse me, the image is glitching out just a little bit. Just give it a minute. And you'll notice that right here is where the 5.0 occurred. We'll take a closer look at that in just a bit. However, you can see that there's a big space right here, which is supposedly where the magma chamber is located at the coastal volcanic field. It, man, this map is still lagging. But you can tell most of the seismicity is still occurring within the coastal volcanic field area. Primarily the southeast section, but we do have, still have some remaining seismicity up here in the north-northwest section of Coastal Volcanic Field. And this isn't just Ridgecrest, guys. Just letting you know. Now, going back to the earthquake map, let's go to the magnitude 5.0 just real quick. And we'll just take a quick dive into Coastal Volcanic Field and the magmatic system that is in the area of all of these earthquakes. Let's see. Can I go to... Let's do largest magnitude first. Magnitude 5.0 today, multiple magnitude 3 aftershocks, no magnitude 4 aftershocks, but still this 5.0. They're probably going to say it's related to the aftershocks of the 7.1 earlier this year, but I'm starting to think that maybe not. I'm thinking this could be related to some type of response from the magmatic system in the area. After all, this this intense seismicity near any type of magma system should make it react in some way, but we really haven't seen too much in terms of reaction from the magmatic system, which is very strange, very strange in my opinion. It was a 5.0 at 2.4 kilometers in depth in coastal volcanic field. Over 1,000 people reported feeling this earthquake. Going down, okay. And it pretty much looks like a strike slip event. It looks a little weird. I'm still a little iffy on moment tensors, but it does to me look somewhat like a strike slip event, which is the same type of earthquakes that were occurring as part of the ridge crest sequence. But this is all the way up to the north east excuse me northwest so i don't know now let's learn a little bit about coso volcanic field itself real quick i have two publications one from 2003 and one from excuse me let me go all the way back up from 1987 these two publications basically they, they basically complement each other there are a few corrections here and there from the 1987 one but they basically do complement each other now, single chamber silicic magma system inferred from shear wave discontinuities of the crust and uppermost mantle, Coso Geothermal Area, California. Now, scrolling down, I'll take a second to load. Let's see, I just wanted you to see something. I did talk about this in one of my recent videos, probably five, six videos ago or so. Let's go all the way down. Now, again, this is where the magma chamber is supposedly located in somewhere in this area right here, which coincidentally is basically the same location where we have seen a big lack of seismicity. Notice how with the bridge crest, which we see the aftershocks from the 7.1 from the ruptured zone right here. And then stops and swarming occurs within the coastal volcanic field. And then we see a big space where barely any seismicity at all occurs. And then up here to the northwest, we see continued seismicity. This is basically right where the magma chamber is located at the coastal volcanic field. So it is interesting to note that we have barely have seen any seismicity with the magma system, which in my opinion, eh, it's not a good thing, guys. We should be seeing some type of response as the magma system settles and readjusts to this uh, to this large earthquake sequence that occurred. So 
Very interesting, guys. Now let's move back to the publication right here. Go all the way down if it'll let me. Come on, buddy. Let's see. It's right here. Okay, so this is the coastal volcanic field from west to east. Here's west and here's east. And this is depth right down here. Notice we do have a partial melt area of silica-rich melt, which probably rhyolite, and they do say about greater than or equal to 5% rhyolite. So not too much, but we do have some. And then there really is no lower crustal reservoir, meaning in the lower crust there is no magma chamber. However, down near about 30 to 35 kilometers in depth or so, there is an upper mantle mafic reservoir, possibly a... Now they still haven't really figured out what is driving these uh, the, vol the historical volcanic activity near ridge crest and coastal volcanic field. Well, I'm thinking it probably has to do with a mantle plume. I do believe it is if there definitely is an upper mantle mafic reservoir. Now scrolling all the way down to the conclusion. The presence of an upper crustal magma reservoir situated five kilometers below the center of the modern coastal geothermal field has been confirmed using receiver function analysis. This reservoir is between 2 and 15 kilometers thick, with greater than or equal to 5% rhyolitic melt. Thinner or more mafic reservoirs require higher melt percentages to satisfy our observations. Receiver function modeling, combined with move-out analysis, has shown that a lower crustal magma reservoir is unlikely to underlie the coastal geothermal ever. Uh, excuse me, area. Oh man, I'm not talking very good tonight, guys. However, a possible candidate for an upper mantle reservoir has been detected near 35 kilometers in depth. This mantle reservoir probably feeds the crustal magma body with periodic injections or continuous flow in dikes. Strain localization in the shallow magma reservoir probably causes the coastal area to extend differently than the extensional ter terrains to the north. Now, so that means that basically there is a mantle plume that drives the volcanic activity in this area. It's not just from subduction or tectonic activity or anything like that. It is most likely being caused by some type of mantle interaction with the upper crust, right? So I think that's very interesting. Now here, let's go to the 1987 publication and I'll leave two links. I'll leave a link to this publication and to this publication as well if you would like to read it yourself. Scrolling down, let's go to a page that I found very intriguing. I know this is a lot of technical talk, guys, but it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth trying to understand. Okay. All right. Where is it? Okay. Back projection of the local earthquake data results in an area of low velocity. Remember, when seismic waves travel through magma, it slows them down a lot. That is how they are able to image, like an ultrasound, that's how they're able to image magma reservoirs. Low velocity, primarily south of the volcanic field between 5 and 10 kilometers in depth. The block with the maximum slowness anomaly is located beneath the coastal basin, about 10 kilometers southeast of Devil's Kitchen, in an area not well covered by previous seismic experiments. The unsmooth data show a northwest southeast trend of low velocity, which means that the magma chamber would trend from southeast to northwest. Keep that in mind. Southeast to northwest. Averaging 7% slow from just southwest of Sugar, Sugarloaf Mountain to the Coso Basin. This area is per partially coincident with the Reisenberg teleseismic anomaly and may be associated with it. Okay, you saw that, right? Well, let's go take a look at Google Earth just real quick. Here we have Google Earth with a KML overlay of seismicity magnitude 2.5 and above for the Rich Crest Coso Volcanic Field area from July 1st through July 10th, I believe. I believe it's through July 10th or July 20th. Let's see here. What was it? Let's see. E yes, it's through July 20th. Okay. Now notice right here. This is the ridge crest sequence. 7.1 is somewhere in the... Oh, there's 7.1 right there. 6.4 somewhere in this location right over here. Now notice here we have Coso, We have ridge crest right in this area right here. And we have Coso Volcanic Field right down here. Let me zoom in. And that, yes, the China Lake Naval Weapons Test Station area is a volcanic area. So here's the center of coastal volcanic field. You can see obvious old lava flows. And up to the north, we do have rhyolitic domes right in this area, including Cactus Peak, which is a rhyolite dome. Sugar Wolf Mountain, I believe, is also a rhyolite lava dome as well. Now, let's go back to the publication. I just want you to notice something, what they said. The unsmooth data show a north... Oh, wait, let's see. Yeah. 
The unsmooth data show a northwest-southeast trend of low velocity, averaging 7% slow from just southwest of Sugarloaf Mountain to the Coso Basin. So that would be, guys, let's zoom out. So northwest to southeast, just southwest. Here, excuse me, I think I talked wrong. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me do, I'm getting, I'm getting a little confused. So, they say the anomaly starts just to the southwest of Sugarloaf Mountain, right? And trends from the northwest, which would be this way, down to the southeast, to the Coso Basin. You notice that, right? Okay, so basically, it's in this area, right in this area, where we see very minimal seismic activity. And notice the seismicity always stops right in this location right here, which we do have swarming within the Coso Basin, just on the southeast end of the magma system. Now, zooming out, notice how the trend of the ridge crest sequence primarily goes from southeast to northwest. Again, the magma system in the area, the magma chamber in the area, trends from southeast to northwest. The same exact angle, almost the same angle as the ridge crest sequence. Now, I don't think this particularly was caused by volcanic activity itself. However, I do think it is definitely connected to potential future volcanic activity in this area. Maybe years, maybe months. I don't know when. I don't know when that could occur, guys. But I'm just saying that the relationship between this earthquake sequence and the coastal volcanic uh, field magma system is uncanny. There is got, there, there's definitely got to be some type of correlation. Again, the magma chamber just to the southwest of Sugarloaf Mountain from this area down to the southeast to Coso Basin. Very, very intriguing. So, what do you think about that, guys? Trends the same direction, basically, as the ridge crest sequence. I found that very interesting. I'm still researching a lot about Coso Volcanic Field. And again, today we did see a magnitude 5. Which, if you'll see, is the largest earthquake to strike the coastal volcanic field area since the ridge crest sequence did start um, on July 4th through July 6th. Notice the last one was 5.4 on July 6th, 5.5 on July 6th, July 6th, of course, we had the 7.1, July 5th, we had a 5.4. So basically, this is the largest since the ridge crest sequence did start, guys. So it's definitely notable that we did see another magnitude 5 when we all thought it was starting to calm down. It appears that it is not. And I still believe we're going to see a lot of interesting activity over the next few years in this location with a slight chance of volcanic activity. Not saying for sure that's going to happen. It's going to be very interesting. But primarily in this location, they'd probably be, be lava flows or lava domes. And really, not that many people would get hurt or die. I mean, rhyolite lava flows really flow slow. But also, under the right conditions, rhyolite can also be extremely explosive. So we'll just have to take a look at this area and keep an eye on it. Again, the magma chamber is in this location right here, but it is possibly fed by an upper mantle reservoir, possibly a mantle plume, which is possibly, I believe, larger than the actual mag uh, upper crustal magma reservoir itself. Now, let's take a look at this magnitude 5.0 at 2.4 kilometers in depth from the closest seismic station. Let's see which one that was, just real quick. Go to phases... Apparently, the closest seismic station to this magnitude 5.0 at Coastal Volcanic Field would be WRC2 in the CI network from the SCDC Data Select URL Builder. I'll pull that up right now. Here we have WRC2 in the CI network. Let's add a 1 hertz high pass filter to the 8th power, just real quick. Okay, now you notice that for a while we have been seeing ongoing seismicity in this area, in the Ridge Crest at Coastal Volcanic Field area. Almost near constant still. There are a few breaks here and there of only a few minutes of no seismicity. But within a few minutes, it usually comes back. And my computer's glitching once again. Hold up, guys. Okay, I'm back. My computer actually froze, and I had to reboot it real quick. So we are back. Okay. Got my spectrogram up. And waveform plots. Notice again, it's pretty much constant. A few breaks here and there, as I was saying. But still pretty constant in this area, guys. And I still am not seeing any low-frequency volcanic tremor or any low-frequency earthquakes, which is a good sign for right now. I mean, it's not necessarily required, but I'm still keeping an eye out for it. I will be for months, if not years, for this area. I'm definitely going to be keeping a close eye on this area for quite a long time, guys. And notice, prior to the magnitude 5.0, we did see a slight increase in activity, probably magnitude 3 right there. 
And then we did see seismicity slowly increase, and then boom, here's the magnitude 5.0, which is the largest earthquake to strike the coastal volcanic field ridge crest area since July 6th, when the ridge crest sequence started, or two days after it started, actually. And notice here we see the waveforms right here, some dominant lower frequencies at the end, possible surface waves, very interesting nonetheless. Going forward, look at all of those earthquakes, look at all those aftershocks, guys, look at that. Yeah, seismicity is still ongoing in this area, guys. Look at all of those. Look at this. See, so my opinion, how fast these are occurring in coastal volcanic field is more along the lines of some type of fluid flow. It's, not, In my opinion, it's not just direct tectonic activity. I mean, that's just my opinion. I'm not a professional. I probably could be wrong, you know. But with the speed, even after a 5.0, I've seen 5.0 uh, earthquakes occur before in places and not see this many aftershocks. I've even seen, seen a magnitude 5 or magnitude 6 occur with barely any aftershocks at all. So it is notable that look at a almost constant. Now these are not drumbeat earthquakes. They do not have a perfect rhythm, but it's pretty close, guys. Look at how fast some of these earthquakes are occurring. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Occurring pretty quick, guys. Let's scroll through this pretty quick because there's a lot of data. Still not seeing any low-frequency earthquakes, but microquakes are still popping off like crazy with a random magnitude 2 and magnitude 3. Do you see some lower frequencies right here, however? That's pretty interesting. That was a quick blurt, though. Let's go forward. Still continuing, guys. Still continues. Uh-oh. It's very interesting. We are starting to see a little bit of lower frequencies right there. I have not seen these before. That's very interesting. I'll keep an eye on that. It's very weak, but I will keep an eye out for more of those occurring because I have not seen those occur here before, especially on this station. Going forward, we still see seismicity continues almost at a near constant rate. Yeah. So, seismicity continues for the Ridgecrest Coastal Volcanic Field area. That's that. Now let's real, take a real quick look at deformation for ridge crest and coastal volcanic field just real fast. So we're going to take a real quick look at recent uplift subsidence patterns for this station right here. Here we have COSO, coastal volcanic field in the magma chamber supposedly located right beneath this GPS station right here. We're going to take a look at the data for that, which is COSO. Then we're also going to take a look at TOWG. And then we're also going to take a look at CCCC. And already you can see a little spike and uplift right there. So let's take a look at this in Microsoft Excel just real quick. I'll start from north and head to the south. So here we have Microsoft Excel with COSO, which is basically right on top of the magmatic system, uh, the upper crustal magmatic system in uh, COSO Volcanic Field. We're going to take Delta U, which would show us uplift or subsidence patterns go all the way down. Now this is for the past year, as of August 22nd, 2019. Press Insert. I'm going to add a scatter plot just real quick. Each dot is one sample taken per day. Now going back here, notice we do not see too much of a change, right? We saw a little bit of subsidence, but they were really not much at all, guys. Not too much of a change. It looked like it was going up at the end, but I don't know. So we don't see too much of a change right on top of the magma system, but why don't we go take a look at TOWG, which is basically... I believe that's uh, about 10, 20 kilometers to the south of the COSO station. And here we have station TOWG, CWNAM08, which is a little bit different than what I usually use, but it still will remove the North American plate in motion. Let's go right here and take a look at recent size, or excuse me, deformation with a scatter plot. Okay, so when the ridge crest events started, remember this is about the past year. When the ridge crest events started right around here, we did see big spike and uplift, actually. Which, these were supposed to be primarily strikes of earthquakes. So we shouldn't have seen too much uplift, guys. I mean, it was sudden. Very sudden. And this station basically, I mean, it did cut off before. And so maybe they did move the station a little bit more uphill. But I don't think so. And look at right now. You see right now. So it started right about here, right when the ridge crest sequence started. This is what it was prior. Notice how it started to go down a little bit of subsidence, and notice right now it is currently going back up. We are seeing a little bit of an uplift right there. But now let's take a look at CCCC, which resides in Ridgecrest, which is south of the coastal volcanic field. So on top of the magma system, we were seeing a little bit of subsidence and 
but basically nothing, right? But farther south you go, you see a lot more vertical deformation, which in my opinion is very strange. I mean, did, did it cause something to shift? I, I don't know. I don't know. But we're just going to take a look at CC, CC, which is in Ridgecrest, California. Here we have CC, CC, CWU, and AM08. Delta U, going to use this to check uplift or subsidence patterns in the Ridgecrest area for the past year. And going down, we do see, wow, now I checked this a week or two ago. Now, if there was uplift caused by tectonic activity, which is possible, that can happen during large earthquakes, but we should not still be seeing uplift, guys. We still should not be seeing it at all. I mean, really, it should not be continuing. I, I'm just, I'm shocked. Look at the uplift. Ridgecrest sequence started right about this location right here or so. And let's see, wait a second. Let's go 266, so that'd be 276. Let's see here. Where is it, buddy? Oh, here it is. No, let's see. Ridgecrest would start right about there. So 310. So that'd be right about, right about here is when the Ridgecrest sequence started, right here. Ever since then, boom, skyrocketing, guys. Not, not, not too crazy. Let's see. One, two, three. So each line from line to line, or each section from line to line is a total of, what is that? Let's see. One, two, three, five millimeters. So nothing too crazy. Not a huge amount of uplift, but it still is continuing. For the Ridgecrest area. And again, this is where CCCC is located. Right down in just south of Ridgecrest area. And we have no GPS instruments in this location at all. So there could be even more severe uplift occurring over here. Or even over here. But we did see a little bit of uplift from TOWG in this location right here. But not much in this location up here. So near the Ridgecrest sequence, there is still uplift going on. The ground is still swelling in that region possibly for i uh, you guys be the judge on that but you saw the data from two gps stations in the area pretty basically the only ones we can use that uplift is occurring so moving on we'll check this again in a few weeks to see where uplift is headed if it has stopped it basically has not stopped it's still ongoing guys so let's move on here you have the past seven days, all magnitudes for the big island of Hawaii. Now, they don't report 100% of these events out here on the big island. HBO under monitoring, under past data, they do report more on there. But we still can see a good-sized swarm that I did talk about in one of my recent videos in the Pahala area. Now, according to the depth and the location, this basically is the exact same location where a spasmodic tremor occurs. Mainly, it occurs a little bit offshore. But it occurs basically between, anywhere between from 20 kilometers to 60 kilometers in depth. Basically in this location right here off the coast of Bahala. Basically, and I'm saying basically a lot. But there has been virtually no spasmodic tremor. There were two very small ones, and I'll show you that in just a second. But they have been primarily earthquakes. All of these guys. We've been seeing a good sized swarm within the mantle plume off the coast of Bahala, Hawaii. And again, if you go to the description box below under links and say, and we'll go to the link that says, what is spasmodic tremor? You'll see why it is the spasmodic tremor events that are sometimes reported in this area and reported by me as well are occurring within the mantle plume and they are directly connected to these earthquakes here. But we did see something very interesting not too long ago. We saw a magnitude 4.2 at 46 kilometers in depth far off the coast of Pahala, Hawaii. 46 kilometers, that's pretty deep, guys, and you'll see where this occurred. 42 people reported feeling this magnitude 4.2, which is the largest since the magnitude 4.5 in Hilo Bay more than a week ago. Now, oh, man, my computer is freezing again, guys. Now, here we are at volcanoes.usgs.gov. We can see the 4.5 in Hilo Bay right up here on August 12, 2019. But right down here, we see the swarm of earthquakes occurring within the mantle plume off the coast of Pahala, Hawaii. Sorry again, guys, it is lagging a lot. Okay, so we see the 4.2 that occurred earlier today right here at 28.6 miles in depth, which would be about 46 kilometers in depth. We have the Moihi Seamount, which is a good-sized volcanic 
Seamount off the coast of Hawaii. And we do see it occurred right under the southern flanks right there. And we're going to take a look at past seismicity for the past few days, including this 4.2 from seismic station TRAD, which resides on the slopes of Mauna Loa. Usually I'd use a closer station, but since the 4.2 was pretty deep, and I want to show you some spasmodic tremor. I'm going to show you it on station TRAD. So we should get a good look at some of these events. So here we have the past uh, five days or so worth of data from TRAD and the HB network, which is on the slopes of Mauna Loa. And we do see seismicity was start started around the 17th. Actually, seismicity has been ongoing here and there. But as we go forward, notice in earthquakes do start to increase at about midday on the 18th. And then boom, the swarm began within the mantle plume off the coast of Pahala, Hawaii, full-blown swarm around 18 UTC. Basically, that's where I'm going to say the swarm actually started. Probably started a little bit earlier than that, but just to give myself a good time frame, because I am going to make a blog post on this in the coming days, uh, I just want to say, start right around there. Notice the increase in seismicity was good-sized, guys. A lot of earthquakes occurring within that mantle plume. And notice we did see a few spasmodic tremor events. I thought these were surface events. Again, but these are not. These are typical spasmodic tremor events. No, it doesn't look like it. But again, you could go to what is spasmodic tremor in the links section in the uh, description box below. Go check that out. I've been reporting on spasmodic tremor for quite a while, and I can pick them out pretty easily. Typical spasmodic tremor event. And here's the third one that occurred right here. This one lasted half an hour or so, a little over half an hour. All right, moving forward, we do see more earthquakes. Calm down a little bit after the spasmodic tremor occurred. And then we saw an increase in seismicity prior to the 4.2 under Loihi Seamount. And then right here, we do see the magnitude 4.2, which occurred under the Loihi Seamount. And here it is right here. Very deep quake, guys, with a very strange P wave arrival. Downwards dipping, but look at that. Look at that space right there. Very interesting lower frequency right there. I don't know. That's very strange, guys. And Luihi has seen possibly volcanic eruptions in recorded history before, but we have better monitoring techniques now than we did, say, 20 years ago or so. Let's see if this is spasmodic tremor. I believe this is. Let's zoom all the way out. Yeah, I believe this is another spasmodic tremor that occurred about an hour or so ago. Very weak. Very little tremor involved. Primarily earthquakes occurring as part of it. Remember, spasmodic tremor can be more along the lines of tremor itself with a little bit of earthquakes, or it could be primarily earthquakes with barely any tremor. It all depends. It all depends, guys. So that's it for right now. I hope you guys have a great day. I will be back soon. Interesting how uplift is occurring in the Ridgecrest area, guys. So what do you think about that? Let me know in the comment section below. I try to reply to a lot of comments, but sometimes I just don't have time to. So if you have anything very interesting to me, just send me an email at washingtonmagma at yahoo.com. Have a great day, guys. God bless. See you later.